Surface Painter is our latest add-on that is here to improve your workflow with the most basic materials in Blender. From now on you can create simple materials with the specified colors and append them to the selected areas on your meshes with no need of entering the shader editor or creating new materials from scratch. Sounds good enough? In this video I will teach you how to install and use Surface Painter to get the amazing results in your project with literally no effort. So let's get started. Installation of this add-on is very simple and looks like any other plugin installation. Simply get to the Blender Preferences, Add-ons tab, click Install and head to the add-on zip file wherever you have downloaded it. Select it and double click or press OK and that's it. Now expand the Add-on tab and click on the Install Pillow button if you see one. This is done just once and will download the library for showing preview images within Addo faster. When done, get back to the 3D viewport and let's start some painting. As you probably got plenty of panels from another add-ons, we wanted not to add another one to your end tab. So Surface Painter is created as a tool located here among the icons on the left side of your 3D viewport. To activate it, simply click on this icon and press P on your keyboard. You should now see all its settings here in the toolbar. The first two boxes are for the surface selection. They do basically the same, just the first one shows large icons while the other one shows the least. Right here you can see the Paint on Selected Mode button, which is active by default. That means that for our painting we'll use only the currently selected objects. If you disable this setting, you'll be able to paint on any object you just click over, but in larger scenes this may cause some unexpected results, so it's recommended to keep selection lock active. Remember that you can still select or deselect objects with left mouse button when our tool is active, so keeping the selection lock may be just a good idea. Right here you can pick if you want to use the color from the palette or the custom color for painting. Um, custom color simply allows you to pick any color from the color picker, so there is not much to talk about. So let's get back to the palettes. By the default you should have the standard colors palette selected, which is the default surface painter palette with plenty of various colors. When you click on the palette selection box, you should also see favorites and scene favorites which is a really cool feature that allows you to save any colors you want so they could be later easily reused in the current scene or even in another project. So, let's pick some color from the standard palette right now that we'll also use for painting in the moment. In my case it's dark red. And to save it to favorites just click uh, one of the star icons on the right. The field one will save the current color to the global favorites while the other one will store the color in your current scene. So now, the color you've selected should appear among the favorites. Of course you can do the same about the custom color, just in this case the hex number will be used instead of color name. So enough talking about colors, let's now do some painting, what is essential of this add-on. I've already created a mesh that I'll be working on, which is this really simple hard surface crate. You can find a link to download this blend file in the description. As we've got our surface and color selected, in my case it's metal smooth and dark red, we are ready to start painting. To paint the surface, simply press Ctrl and left mouse button over the desired area. Oh, and here I've got the entire object painted, because there was no material assigned to it yet. So in this case, no matter what painting mode you'll choose, the painted surface will always be assigned to the entire object. So let's undo this and create a new material here, so this situation does not happen again. By the default, the sharp edges mode is selected, what means that the target of our painting will be the area limited by the edges with the specified angle, that you can see over here. I will click over this closed cavity here. As you can see, the entire cavity got painted, though it consists of several faces. I will also increase the angle a little bit and paint the surrounding faces here. Now let's switch to the one before last mode, which is the linked geometry mode. I've prepared those two elements of the box as the loose geometry and this particular mode will limit the painting only to these elements if I select them. And while we are in the edit mode, a surface painter works also here, though it needs to be activated by clicking the tool icon on the left. The keyboard shortcut is not working in this mode. 
So now you can process the same operations with Ctrl and left mouse click over the selected area. Don't worry about Blender's selection mode as it will always be switched into the faces selection automatically. Actually using the add-on in the edit mode may be more useful for single face and scene painting modes. Also when you want to paint on the object using modifiers like Array, it's recommended to use the painter in the edit mode to avoid unexpected results. Now, as I've already painted those two loose elements, I get back to the object mode and I'll paint the white part of the model, which is actually the material that I've created at the very beginning. Here I switch to the material mode and in the settings on the right I'll have the material slot mode selected. In this mode I'll replace the entire selected material slot with the new surface, while the other one would paint only the linked faces using the same material. In this case the default settings just fit the best. I change the color for the graphite grey and click over the white area. Now all of this old material is now replaced with my new dark metal surface. Oh and I see I forgot to paint this cavity here but I want it to be red as the other accent elements. I could set this up from scratch but I can also retrieve the settings by selecting the desired surface with the pick surface tool or by selecting the surface from the recently used. I'll pick the first option, so I activate the selection tool and click on any red field to have my red metal set up again. Finally, I'll also paint these extrusions on the top, but to do it I'll show you the scene painting mode, as the shop mode would need me to click actually each face one by one in this case. So, in the edit mode I select the external edges of these holes with Alt and left mouse click and mark them as seams. Now I switch to the seam mode in Surface Painter and when I'm painting, the entire area limited by those seams gets painted. So our very simple model is done and I think that you should now be able to paint just any area of any object that you want. Let's now discuss another useful feature of the add-on that is material tweaking from the object mode. When we now get back from the edit mode, let's head to the item panel on the right. You should see both our materials here under the surface painter tab and this is the place from which you can tweak the settings of the surface node groups without the need of entering the shader editor. This feature may be really useful if you want to make some minor changes without leaving the 3D viewport. Also, if you are using our Flow add-on, Surface Painter materials will also show up in the Properties tab of Flow panel. Let's now talk about creating absolutely new surfaces that you can adjust to your very own needs. Let's open the shader editor with our Create selected. As you can see, the surface is nothing more than the node group with the surface color input and all other settings. So creating the custom surface is just creating the simple node group that meets some specific requirements. We've made it as simple as possible, so any user could do it with no problems. I'll switch now to the new material I've done earlier, which is just a simple principled material with bump and color based on the noise texture. I select all the nodes except the material output and convert it to the node group by pressing Ctrl and G. Now, I'll first connect all the settings to the group input that I want to tweak, like specularity, metalness, roughness, noise scale, and so on. All those inputs doesn't really matter, they may just look any way you want. The only thing that your node group must have is any color input node that can be later converted into the surface color and will be the base of our painting. So I connect this socket here to the group input. It's the base color for my material. Of course you can connect just any color socket from any one node you want, there just have to be at least one color input among your group inputs, so the surface can be added to your library. And now let's get back to the group output. This one must have the shader output connected, so the one with the green dot. Always remember that the material output node cannot be included within the group as it may cause a lot of problems. You can also connect the displacement output if you have one. It will be automatically connected to this displacement input in the material output node when using the painter tool. Now when my group is ready, I leave the editing mode by pressing tab and I can now see my group connected to the output node. Now here in the node panel under the surface painter tab, the add custom surface button should be enabled. When I click on it, 
I can see several more settings. The surface name should be pretty obvious. Next one is more important, as with this box you select with which color input would be used as the surface color. In my case I see only one input, because I've connected just one input to my group, but if I'd have more than one color inputs, the list would have been longer, and I'd need to choose which from those inputs will be painted by the add-on. The last two settings affect only the preview rendering and will define what color would your preview object have and what type of displacement would it use. When ready, press OK and after a short while you should be able to see your newly created surface among all the others. You can later delete it by pressing the trash bin icon when it's selected. Remember that you can only remove your custom nodes. For the default ones, remove function will be just disabled. And that's it. Assuming Surface Painter can be extremely useful, especially when you are working with more complex scenes and you want to create multiple objects with simple procedural materials. Creating each one in Vanilla Blender can be pretty annoying, as each time you would need to enter the shader editor, create and tweak the material and append it to the specified areas. With Surface Painter you will save tons of time on doing that. For example, I use it very often when I'm creating interior scenes and I want to paint each wall for another color. Then add some varnish materials to my furniture, make the table's legs made of chrome and so on. I also use this add-on a lot when I'm creating any new assets. It's very enjoyable and makes the boring material creation process really fun. If you like Surface Painter but you still don't have it, you can always get it from our Blender Market Store. You can find link to it in the description. To see more videos and tutorials like this, hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and until the next time.